This is awesome. Uh, I appreciate you inviting me into one of your homes. I think you told me your other home is across the uh, across that way. Am I yeah, right? Across the way. I can, you know, I use my boat as a ferry or the, or the jet skis as a ferry. To Are go. you going to be able to see each house? Uh, most definitely. You know, we're going to clear out a couple of trees over there that uh, that covers it up right now. You can't see it, but we're going to be able to... Uh, open it up, maybe get some uh, binoculars. I got a telescope right there as well, too, that can... Well, this is awesome. I appreciate it. You're two weeks out from, uh, uh, I'm, I would say, uh, maybe you wouldn't say this, but every fight is your biggest fight, mm. uh, being undefeated. Am I wrong? Uh, you're definitely right. You're definitely right. Every, every fight is a big fight because you just never know what's going to happen. You can prepare and train as hard as you can for a fight, but on that day of that night when those lights come on and you have the environment change and when everything becomes so real, you just never know what's going to happen. Any man can get knocked out in the ring, especially when you're, have, when, when you're in the heavyweight division. That's why people love the heavyweight division because it's with, dealing with the big boys and the big boys bring weight. So with weight, it brings power. Do, do you, the, the whole series I'm doing, which is called Self Made, which is this idea of uh, to me, it means doing things on your own. Um, and I can't think of another individual sport that's more, it's all about you. At the end of the day, it's you. Where does that come from in terms of uh, you grew up in Alabama? Where does it come from where you, uh, I guess, let's start with boxing, that boxing became something that you decided I'm going to focus on. Well, boxing only came in my life because of my daughter that was born with spina bifida. You know, being here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, it was, you know, based off of Alabama football. You know, all the kids looked up to the sport because, you know, people had school spirit. They, you know, especially when they're um, playing against different rivals like Auburn or something like that, you see all the hype. You see all the people coming together, the excitement. So when you're around it, you want to be a part of it. But when my daughter came in with dealing with spina bifida, knowing that she had the biggest fight of her life, that allowed me to say, you know what, I need to fight for my family. So I had to choose, you know, whether to get a regular job or pursue my dreams of becoming a professional, where I know that if I make it, then I'll be able to support her beyond her belief. How old were you at the time? I was 19 years old at the time. Uh, did you finish high school? I, I did. Finished high school and I got a little, uh, I got a, a semester or so in for college. I had a daughter coming, so I had to make decisions. But why, why boxing? Um, boxing, you know, for one, I had a uh, reputation for fighting. You know, I tell people all the time, I never look for trouble, but trouble always found me. You know, and people always look at me now because I'm so tall. Yeah. But it was a point in time that. I wasn't as tall and I had to grow into this height, you know, but, you know, being here where there's nothing, really nothing to do, people would pick with you. They're fine fun. You know, as guy, as boys, the most fun that we found was the fun that we didn't suppose, with the things that we didn't supposed to be into. Yeah. Because it's just, a, it's, you know, when things are, are suspense. Uh, you don't know, you know, you know, you're not supposed to do it, but you know, you get the thrill from doing it because you know what the consequences that can come from behind it if you get caught. You know, you got in trouble a lot, you know, and people always pick with you and try to test you, especially if you go in certain neighborhoods. Like every day I walked out of the house, it's about literally I was about to fight, you know. It, it, be, because they knew you could would win, because they knew you were the guy. Be, why? It plays a lot of part. It could. It, you know, one of the reasons I always, you know, people love a winner until he wins so much. Yeah. And then people want to see you lose. And that could be one thing. They just love to hate. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then on the other end, like I said, I was, I've always been, you know, small frame. My body has always been an athletic 
type of build. I've never been a muscular type of guy. And then uh, being short, you know, as well. And so people thought they had the advantage over me. It's just like now, you know, because I'm not this big heavyweight, I don't look the part, yeah. but I'm every bit of the part. And to me, and, and again, this, this self-made idea, um, whether I'm talking to a, a Rick Ross or a DJ Khaled or a, or a Dave East, everyone's got a little chip on their shoulder. So I almost picture by what you're saying, uh, you have a chip on your shoulder because they didn't, they don't expect, they see something mm. that you're trying to say, you know what, that's not me. I'm something bigger than that. You know, many, many people looked at me as a statistic to society. Yeah. Many people had my life picked out, you know, better than I could have it picked out. And what they had picked out was negativity. It was in the wrong way. You know, it was of my peers or what, what you know, certain things like that. But I always had a plan for my, my life, you know. And I just wanted to see myself get there. Although my peers had things going on and stuff. I, I've never been peer pressured uh, to do anything, but only what I wanted to do and I, what I knew what was right. You know, my father raised me and my brother well. You know, he taught us to work. You know, in the South, you're going to work. That's why yeah. they say them country boys are strong. Yeah. Because we're always working with our hands. We're always doing something, whether it's in the yard or whether it's outside of the house or wherever we go. You know, they're just... So how did, how did boxing kick in for you? Boxing kicked in, you know... Um, when I knew I had a daughter coming on uh, on his way, and um, dealing with the uh, disorder of spinal bifida, I, I had no knowledge of it. But it's money to pay for. I'm like, there you go. That's it. There you go. You just thought I'm gonna. I need to make some money. It, and what went in your mind? You knew people were gonna pay for to. to uh, it was a quick pay. I, I knew nothing about boxing. You know, boxing came to me because I had a friend in college. And um, at lunch, we used to always see, I'm a type of person that I plan things out. I speak it, believe it, receive it. Mm. You know, and I always say, speak it, believe it, receive See, the belief is the water that grows your plant. Mm -hmm. Now, you can say anything in life. You can say you can be this, you're going to have this and that. But it's only your words. No action is applied to that. So if it's just your words, it's just, it's just what it is, your words. You can be, everyone has greatness. Mm. But greatness Greatness is determined by service. We can be great but not even know it, but then until we plow the service, and then until we discover we're great, you know? So with me, it's like I wanted to show instead of just speaking all the time and doing different things. So with with boxing came along, I was ignorant to the sport. I didn't know how they made, well, I knew you had to fight, prize fight, you make money, but I was ignorant to the sport because I felt like every fighter that stepped in the ring made a lot of money. Or if you see them on magazines, they made a lot of money. I didn't know it was a process to get in there. And with my daughter and her condition, condition needing needing money fast, quick, and in a hurry. And in my position where I couldn't go to school no more to, to you know, play the sports, mm. to be a professional football player, basketball player, I had to lean towards something else. Did and you play other sports? I did. I played football, basketball, baseball. If so, I had time for soccer. The, the, the thing I get out of it, which is interesting, is those are all, everything you just said, sports-wise, is team sports. Mm. You picked a sport that's just you. Yeah. What does that, like, to me, what does that tell you about you? I mean, that just tell me that I'll do anything for my children. Yeah. I'll sacrifice my life for my kids, man. <laughs> you know? And that's exactly what I've been doing. 40 a fight, 40 fights. I've sacrificed my Where do you body. think that comes from? It just, you know, just being raised here down in the South, man. You know, you you know, a lot of people get the South misconstrued with racism and all that, but racism everywhere. I've traveled a lot of places. Racism everywhere. Just here, they're just more open. Yeah. And I like a person that's going to be, up, you know, that can tell me straight up what they are instead of behind closed doors. And with that being said, you build a stronger mentality. You build a work ethic. Like with my father, he always had a, a strong work ethic. And with me and my brothers growing up, we saw that. He put us to work. Every, you know. And when, when we got older, the, the work that he used to have to do, he didn't have to do no more because he relied on us because we was older now. And we knew what to do. And if it wasn't done... Did your father possible. support you in boxing? You Same. know, my... I want to do this. Yeah. Yes, I support mm -hmm. you. Yeah. My, you know, 
in boxing, my father didn't want me to, yeah. to box. You know, he was one of those fighters, those fathers that had his uh, had things planned out for his children, and he, and he was basketball. He was a basketball type of guy. He yeah. played ball throughout college and different things like that. And that's what he wanted his sons to do. But I didn't believe in just playing one sport. I believed in playing multiples of sports. So when I got into boxing, you know, it's a brutal sport. No parent really wants to see <laughs> their children no. getting hit in the face, especially no. if they're not used to it. He wasn't used to that atmosphere. He wasn't used to watching boxing, you know. So I could understand how he would look at this, but he didn't know my talent. He didn't know, you know, what God had for me. So did you think you were going to be a good boxer? Not only did I think it, I knew it. I spoke it. I believed it. Why? Because I wasn't fighting for myself. Self mm. is selfish. I had this other little girl on the side of me, man, that was looking up to me. I had this little girl that I looked into her eyes and I said, Daddy's going to be a world champion one day. And I come from unfulfilled promises. I know what it feels like for somebody to promise you something. And you wait year after year after year after year. And it never happens until finally you just come to realization. It's like, it ain't going to never happen. So you can't depend on people. Mm. With that being said, you have to go get it for yourself. <laughs> That's what did, I did. did anybody, or who was the first person from the boxing side who said, you know what, Deontay's got something here? Who saw something in you to say, I, I'm going to put some time in this guy? Well, you know, when I went to the gym, you know, it was still doubts, you know. Like you said, boxing is a lonely sport. It's a, it's a savage sport. It's a snake's business. You know, if you're not smart, you will get taken advantage of. You know, it's a dirty game. But coming into boxing, even just me and my trainer, at first, it was, you know, he would tell you himself, he said, the basketball court's down the street. That's mm -hmm. what he was thinking because I'm coming in with a small frame, talking about I want to fight. And he see over 100 kids coming in saying this is what they want to do, but they don't know what they're asking for. Some people can get past sparring, but not the conditioning part. Mm -hmm. Some people can get past the condition, but don't, but don't, but can't see themselves getting hit in the ring. You know, when I came in, you know, he didn't know what he had. He didn't know what work at the, that I possessed. He didn't know that I wasn't doing it for self. This wasn't for self to be famous or make no money. This was making money for my daughter, sure. not for myself. You know, and. I remember sparring a, uh, a professional. Uh, uh, he's been in there. He was up in there for over seven years. You know, and fought, 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 uh, he done fought fights and 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 you know had a little reputation going in. And uh, three months into my training, I ended up dropping this guy in the first round. Only thing you see him move was his head and just to lift up to look at my trainer and say, "Keep this guy in. He's strong." And from that point on, the belief came even more real. Realer than what it, it was when I walked in. And with my trainer, you know, when guys are working out or doing anything intense and it become, you know, where you, you see your stuff starting to to reach a peak where you're getting tired, fatigue and stuff like that, people start to quit. Mm. But my trainer said he knew he had something in me because not only was I working hard when he was looking, but I was working even harder when he wasn't looking. And that was a big deal for him.